Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm he has communism, E-I-E-I-O. With a Trotsky here and a Stalin there, he remarks, there are marks everywhere are marks, marks. Animals conquered the farm, everyone's equal. But some are more equal than others. Animal Farm. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the 1945 literary classic by George Orwell, which is now known as the most famous allegory of communism under the regime of Joseph Stalin. However, instead of going into the actual facts and just discuss about Stalin's history, everything is told through talking animals to give the story a more interesting twist and add in Orwell's idea if animals become aware of their strengths and how they can overthrow their human overlords. Fast forward to 1954, the studio Halas and Bachelor created the first film adaptation of the book that is also the first ever British animated feature. Well, if you don't count handling ships because that's just a training film. But when it comes to the movie itself, is it more equal than other movies? Or did the pigs end up sending it off to the glue factory? Let's find out! The Story Yes, this is an animated film that features cute barnyard animals, but that doesn't make it a fun little kids flick. When it comes to the story, the film does not shy away from the tone of the book. The original story itself is already very well crafted. It's an original piece filled with interesting twists and surprises with a very clever commentary on the issues with communism and the corruption that comes with it for those leading the pack. This movie makes the very clever decision to be as faithful to the original book as possible. I think it's safe to say that this is not a funny movie whatsoever. It barely takes a moment for the characters to do something funny in order to show more of all the hardships they have to go through, both during the Mr. Jones period and the Napoleon period. From the characters doing the hard labor, to the force of action that they have to do to defend Animal Farm, to every death scene that occurs. <laughs> With the last one, they all play a key role in the film. It doesn't seem that much at first, but they seriously change the outcome of what will happen in the farm. It is purely brutal as much as it shows what the characters have to go through, and it is why that this is such a great adaptation. It shows you visually the rise and fall of the community of Animal Farm. Plus, having a narrator tell us the story with not much dialogue from the animals is a nice touch to keep it in a more serious tone. However, as faithful as it is, the movie did make one small change in the last five minutes that made a massive effect to the entire film. Now, I don't normally do this, but it must be discussed. So if you want to avoid any sort of spoilers, I recommend skipping to here. Now, with that said, let me tell you about the ending. The way the book ends is that all the animals witness the alliance of the farmers and the pigs, and at that point, they can no longer see the difference between the two. As for the movie, however, when all the pigs have a big meeting in their fancy suits, the other animals, this time led by Old Benjamin, form an alliance to put an end to Napoleon's regime. Some could argue that this change is because, well, it's an animated film and they have to put in a happy ending for the good guys, right? Well, kinda, but it's a lot more complicated. Allow me to explain. Since this movie was released in 1954, it was made during the height of the Cold War. Despite being a British film, the movie was actually funded by the CIA, and they had a hand in the production to make a little change to the ending. Now, we've already established how this is all one big allegory of the Stalin regime, so instead of leaving the good guy's fate unconfirmed now that the evil Russians are now more evil, the CIA decided to make the good guy stand up and fight against the bad communists. In short, with that small change at the end, they turned Animal Farm into a propaganda film. Despite on how much you like the original book, 
I can imagine that for some, this change won't matter. But for others, this could end off on a sour note because it kind of ruins the point of the whole story. Why make this sudden change when the rest of the movie literally stuck to the book? But either way of how you feel about the last five minutes, the story accomplishes to be a fateful adaptation to George Orwell's strong and brutal book. The Animation For being the first animated film in Britain, the animation is actually really well done. It's funny how this was also at the time when Walt Disney and his nine old men established dominance in the animation field. Because from the artistry and movements of the characters, some could easily mistake this as something that was made by Disney. The biggest accomplishment is how everything is more down to earth. Nothing is exaggerated and even the animal characters are limited to how they move as actual animals. Well, at least until the end. The only element that can arguably be a bit cartoonish is the design of the humans. But again, they don't exaggerate the features, so it does have a good look to them. As for the design of the animals, they stay true to their realistic counterparts, but do feature some animated elements in order to show some emotion. And considering how they mostly don't talk throughout the film, it works out very well. But the true highlight is in the character animation and all the things they did with the animals. Sure, we've all seen realistic animal animation in older movies like in Bambi, but in here, we see how they form a civilization, how the animals are able to work together in order to either farm for themselves or build an entire windmill. On top of that, there are also the action scenes, where the animals have to fight the farmers. This is where things get really intense and doesn't shy away from showing how bad everybody gets injured or even get killed during the battle. If there is one small criticism I would have here, it would be in the backgrounds. Although they do look pretty nice, it's just that it's way too obvious that they're painted and the flat color characters don't feel like they fit in a world where the brush strokes are so easily shown. The animation looks rather simple since it's all just in a farm, but the artistry makes it a fine looking film. The characters. Out of all the things this movie did, their portrayal of the characters is the one that works the most. Starting off with the more important ones, Snowball was the first one that took charge after they got rid of Mr. Jones and showed determination to make a better civilization for the animals as it is the dying wish of Old Major. But then came Napoleon. Throughout this whole film, he saw what's been going on and completely took advantage of what's left in the farm in order to gain complete control over the other animals and have all the pigs be above everyone else. He's both a master planner and manipulator in order to get what he wants, and what he wants is the farm all to himself. So yeah, he is a total villain here, but there is another one, being Mr. Jones, the drunk and aggressive farmer that's the reason why the animals decided to revolt. I'll just say that the way they show him here is absolutely threatening. Since he's usually drunk, his actions are completely unpredictable, and you never know what small thing can occur that would just make him absolutely snap. <laughs> but with all the villains, there are also the protagonists. Yeah, I already mentioned about Snowball, but uh, <laughs> he didn't last that long. What I'm talking about is actually Boxer and his friend Benjamin. Boxer is known to be the admirable horse that works the hardest on the farm and is also the strongest, which is why most of the work is done by himself and with the assistance of Benjamin, who sticks by his side thick and thin, even during the most troubling of moments. As for the other animals, they do play a part in the film to add some elements to how Animal Farm works. Like the dogs are Napoleon's guards, the chickens present what happens when you betray the pigs, the sheep are shown as, well, both literal and metaphorical sheep, the list goes on. By the way, 
I have to give major credit to Maurice Denham for providing the voice of all the characters here. Just the way he goes from the narrator to all the pigs that each have a distinctive voice, it's a really good example of how one actor can widen the range of what he can do with his voice in order to give life to a variety of characters. It's a good thing that the movie stayed very true to the book, because the great characters they have there are perfectly translated to film with this. As it is a fateful adaptation to what is considered one of the greatest novels of the 20th century, it's no surprise that it is also a great animated feature. Animal Farm brings the cleverly written story of George Orwell about the corruption of communism, along with its memorable characters, and brings them to life with some well-crafted animation. If it weren't for that ending that kinda changes things from the original story, this would have easily been an animated masterpiece. But even with that, this is still worth checking out. Rather, if you're a fan of the book, or even if you haven't read it, this can still count as a good visual representation of what the book is about. It is a great take on George Orwell's fable, it is a great first step for Britain to enter in the world of animation, and it's a great enough movie to earn the Animat seal of approval. This is Animat. Now, honestly, I was really excited when I picked Animal Farm out of the animation hat. Mostly because I do have a little bit of a personal connection with the original George Orwell book. And this is actually because back in high school, uh, Animal Farm was the first ever book that I read. Well, actually, now thinking about it, it was the only book that I read specifically meant for school that I had to go and read it and then I personally got invested in it. I was highly intrigued with the story and I was mostly invested with knowing the fascinating characters in there like Benjamin, Boxer, uh, uh, Napoleon, Snowball, and, and like all those characters, they were really, really fascinating. And yeah, I knew about like the allegory and connections with communism and stuff like that because during that time, that was kind of the subject we were getting into and we had to read Animal Farm during that time to like catch up with many of the stuff, but it was really, really fascinating and I absolutely adored the book. Um, honestly, when it comes with the uh, animated feature, like the only criticism that I would really have is with the ending, considering that I really do like the book. And as much as I do want to say that I recommend more the book and stuff like that, Admittedly, despite the little change they did at the end, again, I'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it, I will say, though, that, like, the rest of the movie, like, what didn't happen during that five minutes or even, like, the last two minutes and stuff like that, like, it's straight on a visual representation of the book. Like, they, it did an amazing job adapting it, and that really was uh, amazing. So, um, as, as much as, like... The ending kind of end off a little bit iffy to me because I love the book so much. Uh, the rest of it was definitely fascinating. It was definitely great. And for some reason, like when I was watching the movie, I, I, I had this, I, I suddenly have this fascination with uh, Mr. Jones. Like he seems like an, a really threatening villain. I know that technically the main villain of Animal Farm would be Napoleon and stuff like that, but just the way they represented... Uh, Mr. Jones is actually like he he definitely is a massively threatening villain and I would definitely put him up there with villains like Maleficent in terms of or like M Maleficent or Lady Tremaine as some of like the best villains in a 1950s animated feature it's definitely fascinating or at least one of my personal favorites but anyways that is pretty much it with Animal Farm, and now it is time that we go and move on to the next review through a Patreon request. 
Yes, we got another one so far, and this one is going to be coming from Kim Lechman. So, I just want to advise you that if you guys would like to be like Kim, and you want to go and support my work and get some awesome rewards at the same time, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But at the same time, if you guys would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and I would put into the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatsreviews.com. So, what was it that Kimmy suggested to me? Well, it, I have to admit, it definitely was an interesting choice. And we are sticking to the theme of Europe here. Now, it is set in England, technically, with Animal Farm, or at least it was made in England. But this time, now we're going to be moving to France, specifically in Paris, where we're going to be focusing on some musical cats, per se. No, 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 not the one that you're thinking, it's the other one. 